Welcome to WARK. Today's program is with the storyteller. Good day. I'm David Hayden. I've been a storyteller for many years, telling original stories. Today, I'm in Mr. Finberg's class in Fleischmann's Elementary School in the fourth grade. And they have agreed, these cheerful, bright students, to help me by listening to the stories. Now, imagination is essential. People must listen to the stories and participate with their own inner selves. With a television set, imagination is taken away and put outside on the screen. So I'm going to ask you to do an imagination exercise with me, okay? So that you will know what imagination is and how you can help me with the stories to make them successful and real. Okay, now first I want you to take a deep breath. And then it's so easy to close your eyes. Just let your eyes close. And I want you to imagine an animal with four legs. Let that animal come into your mind and watch it and see what it does. Okay, now I want you to come back to the fourth grade class and open your eyes and we'll see whether the imagination worked. Did anyone see anything? Lyman? I seen a deer observing from a hunter because the hunter was chasing it. Uh, going after a deer. A tiger going after a deer and a hunter going after a deer. Did anyone see any other animals? Yes, Stacy. I saw a kid that, that was feeding its baby. Ah, a sweet kitten. Okay, uh, yes. I seen a horse running What kind of horse? Young? Yeah. Did, was it your horse? No. Did you see anything? A bear. <laughs> what was the bear doing? Knocking down a tree. Knocking down a tree. What was in the tree? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, now we'll do one more. I would like you to take another deep breath. And let your eyes close. Peaceful. And I want you to see a drop of rain falling from the sky. And I want you to see amid all the drops of rain, the one drop of rain that you are. And then I want you to land on the ground. Where did you land? What did you do? Okay, open your eyes. Did anyone see a drop of rain? Yes, what happened this time, Lyman? Where did you land? Landed on the sidewalk. Landed on the sidewalk. Where did you land, Lara? On top of a lady's umbrella. On top of a lady's umbrella. What color was the umbrella? White. White. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. I landed in a field. You landed in a field. Was it on what? What did you land on? A blade of grass or a flower? A blade of grass. Yes. I landed on a car. Oh, what kind of car, Stacy? A cougar. A cougar. Okay, yes? I landed on the road, I got run over. <laughs> you got run over. Oh, dear. <laughs> All right. We now know that imagination works and that you can see in your mind as well as you can see outside. So now I'm going to tell you a very short story, and then I'll tell slightly longer ones. The first story is about a frog, and the frog is hopping down the road, and it's a hot, hot summer day, and the road is very, very dusty. And the frog is hopping along, and I don't know where he's going, but he suddenly decides that a hot, dusty road on a hot, hot summer day is not where he wants to be. So he changes direction, and he hops off the side of the road into the grass. And in three jumps, he's in a meadow. And in six jumps, he jumps into a glade of trees. Ah, he thinks, oh, it's so cool. The sun is coming through in little patches and flashes and shining down on him, but he's not hot anymore. In 12 more jumps, he comes out of the glade and he's right at the edge of a pond. 
And then in one great big leap, he jumps into the water and swims with strong kick of his legs to the bottom. And he just lays in the bottom and his body gets wetter and wetter. And he begins to feel more and more cheerful. And then with one great big kick, he shoots toward the top of the water. And another kick, he shoots out of the water and lands flat on top of a lily pad. And there the sun is beating down on him. And he just enjoys the sun in his wet, green, froggy kind of way. And then he closes his eyes and goes to sleep. That's the story of a frog. Okay, now I'm going to tell you a story about a cloud. Now this cloud is called Stacy Cloud. And it's a little pink cloud. And it comes floating down a narrow valley. It's on its way home. Now there's no other clouds in the sky. And little Stacy Cloud is really looking for something to do. And she goes skidding across the top of the barn she comes up against this big house, and she looks into the house, and she sees a little girl playing in there. And inside the room is a little girl. And Stacy Cloud said, hello, sweet miss. And the little girl looks up and says, mama. Well, when her mother didn't answer, the girl went back to playing with her Tinker Toy son and a doll. And the little girl, whose name was Arlene, was very happy playing all by herself, but suddenly she heard again, I'm out here, sweet miss. I'm outside the window, near the wall. And Arlene got up, and she went over, and she looked out the window, and there was a cloud, and it was pink. And what, she said, well, is that you talking to me? Yes, it's Stacy Cloud. Well, what are you doing out there? Well, I'm a cloud. I live out here. Would you like to come in and play with me? Yes, I would. And she opened up the window, Little Stacy Cloud squeezed in through the window and a little pink spray of light went all over there, a little mist. And she went over and she hovered over the bed. Well, Stacy looked at the little cloud and said, You're not going to rain on my bed, are you? Oh, no, said Arlene Cloud. I would never do that, Stacy Cloud. I would never do that. And Stacy said, I never do that when I'm happy. Oh, dear. She said, would you like to play with me? Because I'm alone too. And she handed out the Tinker Toy Sun. But the little cloud reached out her hand, and the sun fell right through it. Little Stacy Cloud, the light went down, and she got a little gray. And Arlene said, you're not going to rain on my bed now, are you? I might, said Stacy Cloud. Mm -hmm. And then she went across the room, and she went back out the window. And when she went out the window, Stacy oh, goodbye, said Arlene. Goodbye, I'll see you later. And Stacy Cloud was so sad that she began to cry. And when the tears, when she cried, and the raindrops fell down, they were like tears. And they fell all across the road. And then they fell across a puppy dog's tail. And then they fell in the field on the back of a horse. And before Stacy Cloud was down at the crossroads, she was all gone. But when she touched all those things, it made her very, very happy. That's the story of Stacy Cloud. Take another deep breath. Okay, now I'm going to tell you a story about two children. One of the children was a boy named Dan. And the other was a girl named Lara. And they started out one morning to go for a walk together, which they often did. It was Saturday, and there was no school. And they decided to go for a walk through the fields and all the way to the woods. And as they walked along, they saw beautiful primrose flowers. And one of them, a golden one, Lara picked and put in her hair. Dan was busy going back and forth across the path because he saw little animal trails, and he was following them. And they walked for an hour and had a wonderful time talking and sharing the bright sunshine. And they came to the woods. Now perhaps they should have gone home then, but it just began to rain. And they dashed into the woods to try to avoid getting wet. And inside the woods, the branches were very broad and the trees were very tall. And the rain couldn't reach them. 
it had seemed so peaceful and there was no underbrush because the trees were so big that nothing could grow, there was so much shade, and the wood seemed to beckon them on, saying, come on, come for a walk. I have some surprises for you. Well, they walked along for, oh, 10 minutes or so, and suddenly they came out into a clearing, and right in front of them was a rainbow, and it came down upon an island, and the island was in the middle of a pond, and standing in front of this little house, which was on the island, was a little man. Well, they stopped short looking at the rainbow, then they looked at the house, and then they saw the little man, and he had been singing and chopping wood. And he stopped abruptly when he saw them, and he turned around and he said, hi -ho. what are you doing there, little kids? Did you come to get me gold? And Dan said, why, why no, we didn't come to get your gold. And Lara said, no, I'm, we, we're just taking a walk. Are you sure you didn't come for me gold? Many people want to find me gold. And Dan said, who are you? And, and what's your name? I said, my name is Stingle Rester. He said, and I am one of the little people. I'm not a fairy, and I'm not an elf. And my mother was a troll, and my father was one of the little people. Oh, a leprechaun, said Dan. Almost, said Stingle Rester. And he looked very sharply at Dan, and he said, are you sure that you don't come after me gold? And they said, no, no, we, we just out for a walk and we've been gone much too long and I don't think that we should stay here any longer. Well, Stingle Rester, he looked at them very sharply and he said, well, if you're sure that you didn't come for me gold, before you go, why don't I give you a piece? And he reached behind his back and out of the ground he picked a round gold coin threw it over the water. And just as it was passing over the water, a great fish jumped out of the water and tried to catch the coin as it went by. But he missed them and he splashed back into the water. The coin landed at their feet and rolled right up to Dan's shoe. Well, he looked down at the coin, and when they looked at it, it seemed to glow and shimmer. And inside the coin, they saw new toys and nice clothes and a fine house and rich food, and a strong horse, and broad fields filled with grain. Ah, what a treasure. Stingle Rester was standing on the island, rubbing his hands, and Dan reached down to pick up the coin. And Lara said, wait, look out there. And she pointed out into the water. And there they could see, all in the top of the water, were hundreds and hundreds of fishes staring at them. And Dan realized that something was going on, that he shouldn't touch that coin, and he jumped back and he kicked the coin. And Lara said, give it to the fishes. They want the gold. And the coin flashed through the air and landed in the water. And the fish roiling, the water boiled as they tried to get hold of that coin. And Stingle Rester screamed in rage, I you took me gold coin. You never should have given it to the fish. They're greedy, greedy. They were like you, oh, I'm not children, but they came, the men and the women, to steal my gold. But I fixed them, because the coins are bewitched, and it changed with the fishes, and they had to wiggle fast to get into the water, or they drown in the air. Well, the children, they said, no, we've got to get out of here, and they turned and they ran, and Stingle Rester was mad. Be gone, be gone, you wicked ones, you've escaped. He said, but I've lost my gold. Well, the children ran out of the woods, and they ran across the fields, and finally when they got home, they never told anyone where they'd been or what they'd seen, because no one would have believed them. And besides, they would have gotten punished. But they never, ever forgot Stingle Rest's scream of rage, and they never forgot the greedy fish's eyes. Now, do we have time for one more? This next story is about two seals. Now, the first seal that we meet is named Leela. Leela seal is with her mother on the edge of the iceberg, and all the other seals are in the water, and they're swimming 
and chasing fish and playing tag and diving under the water and hiding and doing all the things that seals love to do in the nice cold water way up north. But Leela Seal is sitting on the edge of the iceberg and she is shivering and she is cold. And her mother said to him, Leela, go and play. And he said, no, I, I don't want to. I, I don't feel right. I have these funny little bumps all over my skin. I said, what do you mean, funny little bumps? I don't see them. Well, they're here. She said, I can feel them, and they feel very uncomfortable. Well, she said, just go play like other children. That's all you have to do. Little seal children should be in the water playing. But I don't want to. And she went away by herself. And she came to the polar bear. And she said to the polar bear, who was sound asleep, polar bear, polar bear, Mr. Perkins, sir. And Perkins, the polar bear, woke up and said, what is it? Well, do you know what these are on my flipper? Oh, they look like little bumps to me. But what, what are they, what are their names and what do they mean? Oh, I don't know, he said. And then he went back to sleep. And she went flippering along until she came to the walrus. And she said to the walrus, excuse me, but can you tell me what these bumps are? Well, the walrus was very gruff and said, don't bother me, little girl. I don't have any time. I'm fishing, can't you see? Well, the little Leela went away. She came to a little place that was in the sun. She lay there thinking, and who should land down right next to her but Aurora, the snow goose. And the snow goose looked at her and gave her a little honk and said, oh, I see you've got goosebumps. Goosebumps, said Leela, goosebumps? What are they? Oh, those are the bumps on your skin. You've got goosebumps. That means you're cold. Cold? Leela had never heard the word cold before, and she didn't even know what goosebumps were, but she was glad she had a name for them now. So she went back and she told her mother, I'm cold, and I have goosebumps, and I think that I'm too skinny. I don't have enough fat. What, what? Mother looked at her and could not understand it all, and all her mother could think of to say was, go play. Act like all the other seals, and everything will be all right. And Leela couldn't. And so just then, who should fly down out of the sky but Swifty the turn? And Swifty knew this little Leela, and he'd seen her before, and he said to her, so you got goosebumps, so you're cold. Well, I know what you should do. And Leela said, what? What should I do? You should go south. South, said Leela? What's south? Anywhere but here, he said, just go south, because it's warm down there. That's where I go. I go there all the time. I just come up here to lay eggs. Well, I don't, I don't know where south is. Just keep the sun in front of your eye and you'll be okay. Go on, just head south. So Leela decided that maybe she could go. If anything could get rid of those goosebumps, that's just what she wanted. Are you sure, she said to Swifty, the train that I'll get rid of my goosebumps? Guaranteed, said Swifty. Just jump right in and be gone in no time at all. You'll be warm as toast and no goosebumps. So Leela said goodbye to her mother. She said, I'm going. And her mother said, really? You're going south? But only the birds go south, and you're not a bird. You're a seal. Just play, play, she said. You'll see. Everything will be all right. No, said Leela. It won't be all right. I've tried and tried, and it just doesn't work. And her mother said, well, all I can say, Leela, is don't ever give up. If you run into trouble, if there's some kind of problem you can't solve, never give up. There'll always be a way. So Leela splashed into the water, and she didn't even mind when the goose gups, goose, goose bumps got ten times as bad, because she knew that soon she'd be warm. And she began to swim, and she swam, and she swam, and you know that it's seals can swim very, very, very well. And she swam all day, and all night, and all the next day, and all the next night. And on the third day, she began to get tired, so she rolled over on her back, and she rested. And then she swam, and then she rested, and then she swam and then she ate and swam and rested and pretty soon she began to swim less and rest more until finally, well, she began to get waterlogged. She'd been in the water for a whole week and she didn't even want to eat anymore. She was just tired, so tired and she was getting heavier and heavier and finally she began to sink below the water and her little flippers couldn't even flip anymore and she went down under the water. She saw the sun overhead and she said, oh, oh, goodbye, sun. 
And she flippered one last flipper, and up she came out of the water again, and her nose got up. <sighs> she breathed, and then down she went again. She went way down this time, and she said, I must, I must go on. And her mother said, you can do it. You can do it. She heard her mother's voice in her mind. She flippered to the top of the water, and what do you think she saw? An iceberg was floating by, and with her last strength, she flippered over to the iceberg and pulled herself on it, and then she lost consciousness. When she woke up, the sun was shining, and she was so very tired that she looked up and said, thank you so much, and she went back to sleep. And when she woke up again, she felt better, and she dived into the water and got something to eat. And she went along for a little while until she saw a black doubt out in the water. There was another seal, and she called to it, and it came over, and it crawled up and said, Hi, what are you doing here on this iceberg, way away from all the other seals? Well, my name is Leela Seal, and I'm going south because I've got goosebumps. And the other seal said, Well, my name is Lyman Seal, and, and, and uh, are these goosebumps? And he held out his flipper, and sure enough, there was goosebump upon goosebump upon goosebump. Well, the two became really good friends. And now they had someone to play with, and they kept talking about the day they wouldn't have goosebumps, and they kept going south, and they kept having fun, and they said, this is wonderful, we have a ride all the way. But the one thing they didn't know was, after a while, they got into something called the Gulf Stream, and the Gulf Stream is very warm water, and the iceberg began to melt. Well, they didn't notice it for days and days and days, but one day, the iceberg was so small that when they went to get back on it, it tipped over. And they managed to get out and they hung on as best they could, but they tipped over again until finally there was no more iceberg. There were just two little fat seals, all full of fish, and feeling real happy and heading south. Well, south they went for a whole day, and then another day, and then they became tired. And then they swam and rested just the way they'd done before. Well, Lyman Seal was strong, and he said, come on, I'll help you. And he kind of helped Leela. But then, after a while, Leela helped Lyman so much that now he was weak, and she had to help him. And they were helping each other. Along, Leela and Lyman were getting tighter and tighter, and finally, it happened. They couldn't move anymore. They'd helped each other as far as they could go. And they began to sink together down under the water. Their little fat was all soaked with water, and there was nothing they could do. And they started to drown. And then they heard and then there was a great big flash of light, and there they were all surrounded with hundreds and hundreds of fishes, and they were way up in the air. They had been caught in the net of a fishing boat, and the net went over the boat and dropped down into the hold, and one of the men shouted, Hey, Captain, you see those two little fat seals in there? Think we ought to get them out and throw them back in the water? Nah, them two little squirts. They won't eat much. Besides, he said, they're kind of cute. Maybe we'll take them in and give them to the zoo. Well, they chug-a-chug-chugged along for a couple of days, and they caught lots more fish. Well, the two little seals were so happy down in the hold of the boat, eating fish and talking to one another. And Lyman said, where do you think we're going to go? He said, I don't know where we're going to go, but it's warm down here. Look, no goosebumps. And so the day came when they came to shore, and a truck came from the zoo. And they put them in a tank of warm water went to the zoo. And in every zoo in the world, they have two little seals. And the next time that you see two seals in a zoo, it's probably Leela and Lyman, <laughs> thanking their lucky stars that they no longer have goosebumps. Thank you all for coming and being here. Cheerful, bright friends.
Should I do that or not? Okay. Once upon a time, there was two little people, a boy and a girl. And they lived in a village a lot like yours, only it was near the woods. And the little boy's name was Matthew. And the little girl's name was Melissa. Now, Matthew and Melissa were a brother and a sister, and they always went to school together. Well, one day, on their way to school, they passed uh, an open space between two buildings, and there was a little old lady in a green coat with brown shoes, and she was selling apples and sitting on a little stool. And she smiled a bit at them as they went by, but they were very, very well trained little children, and they didn't go anywhere near that lady even though she smiled at them. And the next day, she said to them, hello, little boy, little girl, wouldn't you like to buy one of my apples? And they scurried right on by because they never spoke to strangers. Well, on the third day, the lady said to them, please, won't you buy one of my apples? Well, they scurried right on by because they weren't going to talk to that lady. They didn't know who she was. And besides, her nose was very sharp. and. They didn't know anything about that lady at all. So they, on the fourth day, the little old lady smiled at them and asked them again, and they went by. And the fifth day, the same thing happened. Well, on Saturday morning, their mommy took them to the store. And they went along past the lady, and suddenly the lady dropped an apple. And the apple rolled out in front of Matthew. And like a good little boy, he picked it up, and he brought it back, and he gave it to her. And the mother said, that's a good boy, Matthew. And Matthew came back and said, thank you, Mama. And then they went on. The next Monday, they were on their way to school, and there was the little old lady again. And she said, Matthew, would you like an apple? And he said, no, no, I wouldn't. But on the next day, when they went by again, she dropped the apple again, and he went and gave it to her. And she, quick as a wink, grabbed him in her bag and started to carry him away. Well, little Melissa ran after her. And she grabbed her and stuffed her in this magic bag and ran away with her into the woods. Well, it wasn't long before they came to the witch's house. And she put them in cages. And there were lots of little children in the cages. It was a terrible place. And there was a great big giant. And he was sitting there keeping guard. And the witch said, now, you keep these children. And you feed them just enough to keep them alive. And when I come back, I'm going to sell them all. Well, the mommy and the daddy were very upset when their little boy and girl were lost. And they heard about that lady, but they didn't know what to do. They looked and looked through the woods, but they couldn't find her because she was a witch of the woods. And her place was hidden by magic. And no one knew where it was. And so after weeks of looking and they couldn't find it, they gave up. And lots and lots of children had been missing that way, but they just didn't know what else to do. Well, there were some squirrels and some rabbits and all the other little animals. They loved this little boy and this little girl, and they used to play with them in the fields. And they got together, and they said they gave up, the mommy and daddy and all the big people. Now we have to go and find them, because we know where that witch lives. And they called the deer and the bear. And they called all of the animals to come and help. But the bear said, uh-uh. I'm not messing with that giant. The last time we went anywhere near him, he took care of us. Well, they talked and they talked, and finally all the animals left except for 16 squirrels and 10 rabbits and one bluebird. And they said, we're going to go and find the little children and bring them back. So what happened was they went right straight to the house because they knew where it was because the witch couldn't hide it from the animals. And the little bluebird looked in the window, and the giant was asleep. And the little children were in the cages. And they all looked very sad. They were all just sitting around with their heads down. And so the rabbit said, bang on the window, bluebird. And so the bluebird banged on the window with its beak. Didn't even wake the giant up. So they tried to make more noise. And they just couldn't make enough noise to wake up the giant. Well, there was a deer who felt so bad that it hadn't come that it came along too and came up just then and said, what are you doing? What's going on? And they said, we can't get into the house. If we could only get into the house, we could do something. And the deer said, I'll bang on the door with my horn. And bang, bang, bang. The deer banged on the door with a loud bang. Well, the 
big giant came to the door and said, who's out there? And he saw the deer's white tail going away and he made a run for the deer and he said, uh, I'll just go back to sleep. Well, the 16 little squirrels and the 10 little rabbits scurried into the house and hid under the cabinets and behind the chair legs and the giant came back in and fell asleep. Well, they started whispering, what do we do? What do we do? What can we do? Let's climb up on that ledge and then we'll jump him. So all the little animals scurried on their little soft feet and they scurried up the bookcase and they got on the ledge and they all lined up along the ledge of the bookcase and then they said, now, and they jumped. Well, they landed on top of that giant's head and they ran down the front of his clothes and they started running up his sleeves and running in his shirt and running down the top of his shirt and some of them, he started banging them and when they fell on the floor they ran up his pants leg and the giant was trying to knock them off and he couldn't do it. Well, the little squirrels were running round and around his middle and the little rabbits got into his armpits and started running around and tickling and tickling. Well, the giant was, ho, oh, he goes, ho, 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 and he started to laugh. Well, he got to laughing so hard that he fell down fell down and he hit his head and he was totally unconscious. Well, the next thing that happened was they came in and they said, we've got to get the children out of the cages. And they started nibbling on the ropes and they got all the cages loose and all the children went outside. And what do you think happened? There was the witch. She had just come back. Well, just, and they said, oh! and the giant came to the door and he said, oh, get him. And he tripped and he fell, boom, and landed right on top of the witch. That was the end of the Wicked Witch of the Woods. And the giant started to get smaller. And he got smaller and smaller and smaller until there was just a big pile of clothes and a little lump. And out of the clothes came a little boy. And he said, the witch made me do it. She made me so big, but now I'm free. And all the children started singing and dancing, and out of the woods came deer from everywhere. And the children climbed on the back of the deer, and they knew where they lived, and the deer took every one of them home. And you never could imagine how happy all those mommies and daddies were to get all their children back home again. Whew. Boy, that was something. Do what again? Do what again? The same story again?